This video is brought to you by Biology Chem L. In this video, we will answer the questions from Chapter 8, Transport System. Before we answer the questions, here are the tips that are useful for us to answer the biology question. Tips number one. Always read and understand the keywords from the question before you answer the question. You can use highlighter or you can underline the keywords from the question. For example, in this question, the keyword is components of cardiovascular system and lymphatic system. Tips number two, study the diagram. Identify the clue from the diagram. For example, in figure 1, cardiovascular system is labeled with blood capillary and lymphatic system is green in color. Tips number 3. Underline the keywords and answer the question based on the marks allocated. For example, question number 1a, define lymphatic system 1 mark. So it means that we need to give simple but conclusive answer. Now we are good to go. Here is another tips. In biology, most all of the concepts, processes, or events can be well explained by using a diagram. So in your study, you should pay attention to the diagram because it gives you a lot of information and also useful during exam. For example, in this diagram, it shows the relationship between the cardiovascular system and lymphatic system. Now, we will answer the question. Question number 1a, define lymphatic system. A system of vessels and nodes separate from the circulatory system that returns fluid and protein to the blood. We proceed with question number 1b. First, we will underline the keywords for this question. Describe the process of formation of limb. Three marks. Question number one, C1. What is X? State two of its characters. Three marks. Question C2. Give one example, component blood plasma that can be found at both ends of the capillary. Why? Two marks. And then question number one, D. How parasitic worm, Brugia malai, causes elephantiasis? One mark. The answer for question number 1b. Describe the process of formation of limb. The high hydrostatic pressure or high blood pressure push fluid and some of its components out of capillaries into interstitial space to form interstitial fluid. Some of the interstitial fluid will enter the lymphatic system by diffusion to form limb. Question number 1, C1. What is X and state 2 of its characters? X is lymphatic capillary. The characters are one cell thick, close at one end, and has many flap valves. Or overlapping junction. Question number one, C2. Give one example component of blood plasma that can be found at both ends of the blood capillary. The answer, the blood cell, platelet, erythrocyte or lymphocyte or diesel proteins because they are too large to pass across the endothelium or the endothelium less permeable to large proteins. Question number 1D. How parasitic worm Brugia malayi causes elephantiasis? The answer, by blocking the lymphatic vessel, disrupting the flow of lymphatic fluid, causing excessive accumulation of fluid in tissue. Now, we will proceed with question number two. So, as usual, before we answer the question, we will underline or highlight the keywords from the question. Describe hypothesis, translocation, 
of organic substances in plant. Number two, we will study the diagram. From the diagram, we can see the cells, companion cell, sieve tube, and then eggs that will move into sieve tube, then to the sink. Tips number three, don't forget to always read the question, underline the keywords from the question, and answer the question based on the marks allocated. The keywords for question number 2a, what is the substance label X? One mark. Question 2b, state another sink, one mark. Here is the diagram that we can use to understand about the translocation or the pressure flow hypothesis in plant. Let's continue with the answer. Question number 2a, what is the substance label X? X is sucrose, sugar, or organic compound. If your answer for X is glucose, your answer is wrong. Question number 2b, state another sink other than root. The answer, fruits, shoot, and buds. Question number 2C. Explain how X is loaded into sieve tube element. Two marks. Question number 2D. What will happen to the pressure potential in the sieve tube elements when X increase? Three marks. Now we will answer the question number 2C. Explain how X is loaded into sieve tube elements. 2 marks. X is loaded from source cell to the companion cell then to the sieve tube by active transport. The energy needed for the active transport is provided by companion cell. Question number 2D. What will happen to the pressure potential in sieve tube elements following an increasing of X. Pressure potential in sieve tube will increase. This is due to the increase in the concentration of X that will lower the water potential of the sieve tube. Water will diffuse into the sieve tube from xylem by osmosis. Question number 2E. The keywords are Explain how X moves out of the sieb tube into the sink. Two marks. What is meant by translocation? Two marks. The question mentioned about substance label X. For this particular question, we will use X instead of sucrose to explain or to answer this question. Let's answer the question. Explain how X moves out of the sieve tube into the sink. The hydrostatic pressure differences between source and sink, in which there are high hydrostatic pressure at the source and low hydrostatic pressure at the sink. X from the source is translocated to the sink down hydrostatic pressure gradient or from high hydrostatic pressure to low hydrostatic pressure. For question number 2F, what is meant by translocation? Translocation is the process in which transport the soluble organic product, sucrose, produced from photosynthesis via phloem from the source cell to the sink cell of vascular plant. Next, we will answer the essay question. First essay, explain the transportation of lipid in human lymphatic system. 10 marks. We can refer to this diagram to explain about the transport of lipid in human lymphatic system. During digestion in the small intestine, the bile salt will emulsify the fat globule into small fat droplet to give easy access for the enzyme lipase to hydrolyze triglyceride into fatty acid and monoglyceride. Fatty acid and monoglyceride will diffuse into the epithelial cells, then recombine to form triglyceride. 
Triglyceride then combines with phospholipid, cholesterol, and proteins to form water-soluble substance called chylomicron. Chylomicron then enter the lymphatic system through lacteal to form chyle or limb to be passed to the large lymphatic ducts then to the veins that lead directly to the heart. Now let's answer the essay question. Explain the transportation of lipid in human lymphatic system. In human, lipids and fat soluble vitamin are transported in the lymphatic system and is aided into the blood circulatory system little by little to prevent blockage of the blood vessels. In small intestine, lipid is digested into fatty acid and monoglyceride by lipase. Fatty acid and monoglyceride enter the villi of the small intestine by diffusion. Fatty acid and monoglyceride combine with protein to form Chylomicron. Chylomicrons enter the lymphatic system via lacteal. Lacteal are lymphatic capillaries in the villi of small intestine. Limb in the lacteal is known as chyle, a creamy white because of the presence of lipids. Chyle is then transported in lymphatic vessel. The backflow of the chyle is prevented by lymphatic valve. Then, travel through lymphatic nodes, lymphatic duct, and enter the left subclavian vein and right subclavian vein into blood circulatory system and return to the heart. Number four, explain the pathway of water being transported surrounding soil to the root vascular system in plant, then marks. So here is the diagram that we can refer or that we can use to answer this question. From the diagram, there are three pathways or routes of water being transported. Level number one is upper plastic pathway. Level number two is symplastic pathway. Level number three is transmembrane route or vacular pathway. The diagram also shows the components of the root system that consists of root hair, epidermis, cortex, endodermis, and vascular cylinder. At the endodermis, there is presence of Casparian strip that's impermeable to water. That is the kind of information that we can learn from the diagram. Now, let's answer the question. Explain the pathway of water being transported surrounding soil to the root vascular system in plant. The cell sap in the root cells contain high concentration of dissolved nutrients and minerals. This reduces the water potential in the roots. The water potential in the roots become lower than the water potential in the surrounding soil. Water moves from the soil into the root hair cells by osmosis. As the root hair cells take up water, its water potentials become higher than the water potential in the cortex cells. Water moves into the cortex cells from the root hair cells via osmosis. This water potential gradient causes water to move from the root hair cells to cortex cells, endodermis cells, and finally reach the xylem in the steel. There are three roads of water from the root hair cells to the xylem. These are simplus pathway, vacular pathway, and apoplast pathway. The simplus pathway refers to the movement of water from the root hair cells to the xylem through the cytoplasm of one cell to another. Since the cytoplasms between plant cells are connected through plasmodes mata, water will move in the cytoplasm of one cell to another through plasmodes mata. Bacular pathway refers to the movement of water from the root hair cells to the xylem through the vehicle of one cell to another. 
apoplast pathway refers to the movement of water from the root hair cells to the xylem through the cell wall of one cell to another. However, the movement of water via this road has to do divert to vacular or symplastic pathway when it reaches the endodermis. This is because the presence of waxy Casparian strip in the cell wall of endodermal cells. That's the end of the question and answer for this chapter, Transport System. Before we officially end this video, once again, we would like to remind you about the tips that you can use to answer the structured and essay question in biology. Tips number one, always read and understand the question by underlining the keywords from the question. Tips number two, study the diagram, extract the information that is useful for you to answer the question. And tips number three, answer the question based on the marks allocated. Until the next video, we wish you all the best.